Now before we begin with our user interface for our cities here and this grid, there are a few things I want to take care of from the previous video where we implemented our navigation. So one thing we did here is we added this navigation class here on the component itself of navigation inside the app.view. Now there's nothing wrong with doing this. Obviously, as you can see, it works perfectly fine. But to keep things a little bit cleaner, I want to actually move this styling directly to our navigation component. And we can actually put this in our header tag here and it will work exactly the same. And I just feel with this way, it is a little bit cleaner and less confusing. And yeah, we're going to go ahead and make that change here. So we no longer need this navigation class here. And then I can also remove it here out of the component we have uh, defined the class of navigation. Okay. So as you can see with that removed and implemented into our navigation component, things still work exactly the same. And this way it's just a little bit more cleaner and a little more organized. All right. So one other thing I want to address is that if we head over to a larger view of our application right now, the uh, desktop version doesn't look so good right now. It's left aligned in the page. So I think that the best way to handle this would be to center this on larger applications because we are going to define the max width of this application to be 1024 pixels. So how we can fix this is if we head down to our main tag here, which is wrapping the entire application, we can simply say max width, set this to 1024 pixels and then go ahead and throw a margin of zero auto to center that in our screen. And you should see that now it is centered. So perfect. That is looking a lot better. Now, last thing I want to actually clean up here is in our methods of get city weather, we actually have a dot then statement here that we no longer need for council dot log this dot city. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove that. Okay. So that should do it for the change that I want to make. So let's go ahead and start with our user interface for our grid and our cities. Now to display each one of our cities that we have in this array, we're actually going to be doing that here in the add city dot view file. Okay. So right now how this is set up is that we have our app dot view here and we have this div with the class of main with our navigation showing and also the router uh, dash view. So this navigation will be present on every single route that we end up setting up in this project. Now the router uh, dash view is only going to show which component is tied to that route. So if we head to our index.js, the main path right here is set up to look at the add city component, which is right here. So when we first load up this application, this is where we want to display all of our cities. So hopefully that makes sense with how each one of these routes are tied to a component and that correlates to what's in the current router view. So the router view um, is pretty much talking about the URL and this path right here. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. So the first thing we want to do is because right now we have our cities array out here in the app.view, we just can't go ahead and use it in the add city.view component um, right away. So we actually need to do what we call a V bind of this data to our router dash view. So that way we can access uh, the data inside the add city component. So what we can say is on our router view, we're going to say V dash bind, and we want to bind the cities array. And inside of this router view, we're just going to go ahead and call it city. So hypothetically, we can name this anything we want, but we're going to be saying here V bind this cities right here. And inside of the router view, which is going to be the add city dot view, we can access this uh, by using cities as well. OK, so if we save this and then we head over to add city dot view, what we need to do now to actually accept this import is we need to go inside of our script tag here inside the export default. And we're going to say we're going to do a new line here and go props. And this is going to be an array. And we're going to simply say the name we gave it of cities. OK. And now if we actually open up the created lifecycle hook right here and we were to, let's say, um, let's just say council.log and how we can reference this collection is by saying this dot cities. And now if we save this and I go inspect our console here and I need to go ahead and dock this at the bottom. 
You should see now that we have access to this array inside the add city component and now we have each one of our cities uh, to go ahead and access that data. Now that we have access to this data, we can begin building out our application here. So what I want to do is in our template tag right now, we have a class name or a div the class name of home. I want to replace this with a class name of grid. And now I'm going to simply style out our grid here really quick. So we need to open up a bracket here and we need to open up our style tags here. So we're going to be using the uh, SCSS scoped. And inside here, I'm simply going to define the grid. And we want to first off say display this as a grid. And I spelled it wrong again. And we're going to give some padding to the top here. And let's try padding top. And we're going to say 81 pixels. Now we also want to give this a background color of 313, 63D. <clears throat> okay. And then we want to give it a width of 100% and also a min height of 100 VH, okay? So if we save that, we should now see, uh, let me refresh that there. Uh, we should see now we have the whole entire background gray. And when we start adding our content in here, it'll uh, be just below the navigation because we gave it a padding of top on the of 81 pixels because the navigation is 81 pixels tall and we want our content to just be below the navigation, okay? Now, one other thing we need to do is we need to add our media query here because as you can see here, maybe I haven't demonstrated this yet, when we get below a certain threshold or a certain viewport width, we're going to be displaying our weather app in a one column approach here, whereas when we get above uh, 400, that is, we're going to be doing a two column approach, okay? So what we want to do here is we want to open a media query and we're going to say at media, we're going to say min width and we're going to say 400 pixels. And then here we want to say grid template columns. And we want to set this to repeat. And we want it to 1FR. Okay, so you're not going to see anything happen here until we start adding some of our grid items. But that is going to be our main uh, styling for our grid here. Okay, so for each one of our grid items, we're actually not going to be doing the HTML inside of this add city view component. We're going to be componentizing each one of our city items here. So what that's going to look like is we're going to need to first create another component here in our components folder. And we're going to call this city.view. So all of the styling and HTML for each one of these cities will be done inside of this component right here and then we're going to import that into our grid here okay so just to give us some examples of this or just how this is going to look we'll create a view template here we'll give this a name and we'll say city is the name and for the style let's go ahead and do a scss scoped here and we'll save that now in the template just for now let's just simply output an h4 here and say city component okay let me just go ahead and capitalize that so there we go here is our basic uh this is just for testing purposes right now um, our city component so what we can say is back in our add city view component we need to import this first off so we can actually get rid of this as well. So just above our export default, we're going to import our city component. So import, we're going to say city and from. Now we are in the views folder right now. So we need to come out of that views folder by doing a double period, uh, a slash, and we're going to say components and then city. Okay. And then we also need to say in our components section here, we got to import uh, city. And then what we're going to do inside of our grid is I'm actually going to create another div here with a class of city link. And inside of here, we're going to output that city component. So how we output this is we open up this, we enter city slash and close that. And now if I save this, you should see the city component data uh, right here in our first grid column. So if I save this, we should see that we have uh, right here our city component. Perfect, okay? So what we want to do now is we want to run through our uh, cities collection here and for each one 
or for each uh, city that's returned, we want to generate this city component. Okay, so how we can do that is we can run a v4 loop here on the class of city link. So we're going to say v4. And now we need to pass this a few values. Now it's going to be like a for each loop where you pass it a parameter as a callback. So what we're going to say is I'm going to actually use some parentheses here because we're also going to define an index. So I'm going to say city and then I'm also going to pass the value of index and we're going to say in and then we're going to look in the cities array which we have right here. Okay, so when we use a v4 loop, you'll see here that whenever we use this, we have to actually have a v bind key directive, and that's where this index comes in. So we're going to bind the key to the index value here. So hopefully that makes sense. So we're going to say v dash bind, and then we're going to say uh, what we here. We're going to do the uh, what is this called? A colon, and then we want to say key, and we're going to set this equal to our index, and that should. Uh, we actually need quotes and we're gonna set this equal to index and that should go ahead and resolve the error so now since we have in our console you'll see here we have two arrays we should see the city component output it twice because it's inside of this v4 loop okay and if we save that you'll see that now we have the other city component right here on our screen so that is all working perfectly